tell that it feels like a lot of water. I feel a lot of water on the back of my head, but I don't think it slipped from my back. Are you sweating? Are you working hard? Um, I am sweating, but it feels like a lot of water. I see it now, wiggling. All right, Chris and Luca, just for you guys, uh, based on what we heard with Luca saying that uh, water is in his eyes now and it seems to be increasing, uh, we think we're going to terminate EVA case for EV2. So, Luca, we'll have you head back to the airlock. Chris, we'll get a plan for you to uh, clean things up here and then join him here in a minute. Patch is open, Shane. For, I think that for a couple of minutes there, um, maybe more than a couple of minutes, I experienced uh, what it's like to be a goldfish in the fishbowl from the point of view of the, of the goldfish. Uh, so about half an hour into the EVA, 45 minutes maybe, uh, Chris and I were, were ahead on our task, so uh, we were starting our, our third task and uh, I felt some water on the back of my head and I realized that uh, it was cold water, it, 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 was a, it was not a normal feeling, so I, I, I told ground. Chris came, came by to, to, give a, to give it a look, he couldn't see anything, he took some pictures of it, but it wasn't until a couple of minutes later that we actually saw the water trickling in the front of the helmet and then I felt it covering my ears and uh, at that point we called the terminate for the EVA. I started going back to the airlock and uh, um, the water kept trickling until it completely covered my eyes and my nose. Um, it was really hard to see. I, I couldn't hear anything. It was really hard to communicate. Uh, I, just, I went back using just, uh, um, uh, just memory, basically going back to the airlock until, until I found it and then uh, went inside and uh, Chris was there in, in, in split seconds to uh, come inside, close the, close the airlock and uh, repressurize. Karen was already there, ready to repressurize. Our Russian colleagues uh, were all there to help and they, as soon as the, uh, as the two compartments were equalized, uh, they doffed, uh, meaning they took off my helmet, uh, wiped my face from all the water, about uh, three, po three pounds of water, I would say, and, uh, and that was the end of it. This is Lucas' helmet, and the, uh, the ventilation air comes into the helmet through this port right here, and then goes behind the uh, crew member's head, and then blows the air across the front of your face. Well, with water, a mixture of water and air getting into this vent port, the water bubble started to build up behind his, behind this white plastic uh, piece. Once the water got big enough that it went all the way around and started coming outside the edge of the white plastic, then it, it saturated his communication cap and sort of capillary flow just brought the water all to the all around his head and he had uh, water on his, and it filled up in his ear cups and it started to creep into his eyes and covered covered his nose. Scary situation. Um, the ground teams worked really well to give us some direction, and as a team, we got everybody back, and everything was fine. Um, for me, the worst part, uh, as, as um, Chris mentioned, I was I was miserable, but okay. Uh, it's just imagine walking around with your eyes closed in a fishbowl. Really, that that that's what was going on at the at the at the, palm, at the moment. It's just a very uncomfortable feeling to to be with your. Uh, with your face underwater for all, the, uh, for all that time. Uh, but the reaction of the crew was outstanding, I think. The crew on the ground and the crew on board, uh, Chris really supported me and I was just uh, lucky to, uh, to be back inside in no time. Working is complete and we'll continue on with the rest.